integers are, in some sense, the basis of all of mathematics, both intrinsically, I would say, but also historically. The first numbers that human beings knew were whole numbers, whole positive numbers. I think that most people who become interested in mathematics early on do have some early contacts with number theory, even though uh, number theory requires uh, tools from all over mathematics. The statements are often very simple and can be understood by any interested person. Harald Andres Helfgott is one of the world's leading researchers in analytic number theory. He has made significant contributions to solving basic problems in group theory and Diophantine geometry. The Peruvian mathematician works in Paris at the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique. Paris as a city probably has the largest number of top-level mathematicians in the world. I mean, of course, there's, there's New York, there's the Boston area, but just by sheer combination of quality and, and number, uh, Paris would probably come tops nowadays. Helfgott's flagship discipline is proof in number theory. He is particularly fascinated by prime numbers. Especially when it comes to larger numbers, you cannot immediately determine whether they are a prime number or not. For many years, investigating such numbers was considered pure theory. But high prime numbers now have a major practical application as well, to meet the growing demand for information encryption. Prime numbers are also the subject of one of the greatest and oldest conundrums in mathematics, the Goldbach conjecture. For more than 270 years, mathematicians have been searching for proof. Harald Helfgott succeeded in providing it for one aspect of the problem, Goldbach's so-called weak conjecture. So what is it all about? In 1742, Christian Goldbach wrote to his colleague Leonard Euler, every integer greater than five can be written as the sum of three primes. We can easily find plenty of examples. Two plus two plus three equals seven or 3 plus 3 plus 5 equals 11. Couldn't we just keep going on the same principle? You can check it up to a million by hand if you have a lot of time. Uh, you can check it with a computer up to a quintillion if you wish. But the, the trick, I mean the important part, is to prove it for all numbers. And you cannot do that by computer. You have to do it by analysis. Helfgott's approach closes the gap in the chain of proof. It was known that the conjecture holds true for very high numbers, that is, larger than 10 to the power of 1,350. Helfgott now believes he has proved that the conjecture is also valid from 10 to the power of 27. I have finally been able to show that that integral is not zero for all odd numbers bigger than, say, 1 with 27 zeros. Uh, and up to one with 27 zeros, you can just do it by brute force on the computer. It's actually a fairly minor task, if you do it right. There are statements that are just as simple as this one that uh, are far from being solved. And proofs are often long and complex because um, number theory is an area of mathematics to which just about any other area can be applied. So, of course, if things finally work, you have that the poor problem has been attacked with all sorts of tools that are sticking into it. So, essentially, in order to really penetrate into this problem, I had to go around the shed and sharpen every tool that I could get my hands into. Hardy Littlewood circle method, Riemann zeta function, Fourier analysis. The evidence for Goldbach's conjecture is diverse, just as diverse as the cultures in which Harald Helfgott feels at home. The cosmopolitan Peruvian is fluent in six languages. The universal language of mathematics, he says, is firmly embedded in French culture. In France, people talk about the Cartesian spirit, about rationality. It is still part of the human heritage, particularly the French heritage, and it is thought of as an aspect of culture. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure whether there is an historical connection between the French garden with its precise, rational order and the mathematical tradition of Descartes. But I think in common perception, there really is one. Mathematicians certainly enjoy connecting over a shared meal. Professor Helfgott extends an invitation to dîner in his top-floor apartment. A Peruvian dish is on the menu, accompanied by French wine. Ceviche is composed of diced raw fish marinated in lemon juice. This has become something of a tradition in the Helfgott household, which he wants to perpetuate in Germany. In 2015, he is assuming an Alexander von Humboldt professorship at the University of Göttingen. I'm really grateful for it, and I'm looking forward to working together with the colleagues in Göttingen, with colleagues in Germany in general. And I also want to tighten the connections a bit between the mathematical communities in France, Germany and South America. Health's got proof of Goldbust Prime mystery could go down in history. It still has to be verified conclusively, but then it would be valid eternally. In the last resort, we often think like Platonists. We think that mathematical structures always existed and always will, even after the end of humanity. That's why mathematics is so important and so interesting.